But what I want to talk about now is something which I know Chaz and Julia have both experienced, and that's health. You've both experienced health issues, um, no secret. I had a brain tumour, so I went and saw the neurologist. The, how did that manifest itself? Because I first had a of all, seizure in the UK, yeah. got taken to the emergencies in the UK, mm. and they did a few tests, no scans, few mm. tests, discharged me, told me I needed to organise an MRI scan back here, because I lived here. Okay. So they sort of sent me away and tried to get rid of the budget. Mm -hmm. And so I came back here, saw my GP here, who then organised a date to see the neurologist and have the MRI scan. Um, so I had the scan, and a couple of days later I got a phone call from the hospital saying, you have an appointment tomorrow, come in. And I'm thinking, oh, this doesn't sound good. Why are they asking me to come so quickly? Mm. Um, and was told then that I've got the brain tumour and that I needed to come into hospital within a couple of days, which I did. But then it took, I was in the hospital about three weeks before they actually did the operation because it was quite a complicated operation. So they had to do team meetings with all different specialities to make sure everything was covered. And um, then they did the operation, and luckily they got rid of it all, which they weren't sure they were going to be able to, but they did. Um, and then was in hospital for another couple of weeks. I came home and went back again, came home and went back again. But everything seems to be okay, and I've got my next appointment in December, and hopefully then I should be able to drive again. Because mm. that's so quite debilitating. That's very travel. debilitating, especially when you live in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And you've got to rely on other people to take you everywhere. Well, your whole health treatment was the was of national health, basically. To totally national mm -hmm. health, yes. Yeah. And no complaints whatsoever. Staff, doctors, everybody, fantastic. And how did that? How did you cope with the? I mean, your Spanish is good, but how would you cope um, with perhaps not being fluent in the language? Well, I wouldn't say I'm fluent, mm -hmm. but you can cope. They are very understanding that that foreigners don't necessarily understand everything. Um, but there are people around here uh, who uh, translate. Yes. So yes. you could always, if you were worried about understanding or not understanding, you could use the facilities of a translator. I think it's also important to note that there's a, a, a specific uh, rights and directions in all hospitals that the doctor or consultant or whoever has an obligation to ensure that the patient clearly understands what is right or wrong with that patient. Okay. And if that means using a different language, then they quite often have to provide that facility. And in most of the hospitals there are English-speaking uh, people, uh, maybe specific translators or staff mm -hmm. who would be used on that occasion. They've had it in the private hospital, they tend to have a, a regular translator, mainly English, but they do speak German and other languages. But okay. in national health hospitals or social service hospitals, uh, there is usually somebody within the medical staff, that, as most of them do, can speak English relatively well and will be dragged in if there's a need to mm. clearly explain what the issues are. But it's a right obligation that's printed in every waiting room and every... Okay that says that the consultant doctor has got to ensure that the patient clearly understands what is being discussed. Okay. The, you both had your treatment mm -hmm. here. Um, most people skedaddle back to the UK. Yeah. Well, I'd had, uh, had bad treatment in the mm -hmm. UK because, as I say, I went to accident and emergency. They mm -hmm. did basic tests and heart mm -hmm. monitor and what have you and blood pressure looked in my eyes with their torches like they do and what have you and then said well you've got to get your MRI back in the country mm. you live in they didn't really want to know yeah. you know let's yeah. not have you on our budget yeah. thank you very much yeah. next I so, think... so I was quite glad mm. not to go through mm. the system there sure. to be honest and I think uh, as you may well discover by talking to some of our other friends that quite a few of us have had medical treatment over here or quite a few of them have and would swear by it in terms of what they thought they were going to get back in England mm. and were somewhat disappointed. Mm. The response here is so much better. I mean, I'm not being disparaging mm. about UK hospitals because mm. I haven't been in one for many years, yeah. but uh, the cleanliness uh, of hospitals over here seems to be... Um, 
what they do, perhaps I should say, to keep the hospitals clean it seems to be much higher over here. So because they come round regularly, mm, yeah. so many times a day, to clean mm. the wards and everything, and you don't hear, mm. I'm not saying there isn't any, mm. but you don't hear about MRSA no. in the same way you do in England. No. Or, you know, Oh, you can't come in here and you're swabbed before to make sure you've not got it when well, you're in England. And they change the sheets every day and all the... All this oh, they change the sheets system. every day in, in here, yeah. you know, in Spain, but I'm not sure about England. I mean, I haven't been, thank God. Okay, anything else that you think would be useful? Uh, I think the only other thing was the question you put at the bottom, which is about Spanish. Hmm. Learning the language. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's important hmm. to try and integrate as much as possible with the locals. Hmm. But not mm. everybody has the ability to learn a foreign language. So if you're finding it difficult, don't worry. Mm. You can still get by with communication, mm. arm gestures, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the odd picture, dictionary beside you. Mm. But, you know, if you can learn it, do. I think the final thing I'd say on that is that if you try and make the effort to speak some of the words that are common in everyday parlance, so you can at least get by without grammatically being correct, but at least using the right words yes. for the right thing yeah. and understanding what menus are and yes. as they vary, understanding what is basic about cars if you've got one, Yes. Uh, then most people will warm to you anyhow. So. Thanks for watching once again and uh, see you all soon.